I'd kick off our content on YouTube a bit of a review on our 53595. It can lift a maximum weight of three and a half tons. Maximum reach is nine and a half meters through a three stage boom. It's got a pickup pitch on the back, which can lift trailers up, but as long as they ain't too heavy. It started up and show you it pushing that boom out. Nice. So it pushes it out in equal measure each section until it gets out to that nine and a half meters which is about as far as an agri spec will go not really heard of anybody running any longer than that so I'll give you a show how long that is it's pretty far out which makes it ideal for grain pushing and what we use it for most straw half ton weight limit is not when it's out there if you look even with nothing on the front, you can make the back end light when you've got the boom stuck all the way out there. I'm going to pop on the MX Grab and go and fetch a few bales. Show you what all that's about. We've got the Matt Bro headstock on this one, um, which is the two cones on the top and then the locking pins in the bottom. Um, we've always had it that way because we started with Matt Bros way, way back. And so we've always kept um, as implements on the same brackets rather than having to change everything. What I do is I lock the pins with this button, that locks the machine on, then I have to press this button here and work that button again to release the pressure. Auxiliary pipes. Pipes from the MX Grab, put them on, turn the lever. Uh, I'll secure that when I've got two hands. All on and ready to go. Give it a check that everything works and that my pins are staying connected and safe. All good. Right, time for a little drive to get some straw. Apologies for my shaky camera skills. But I ain't got a tripod or anything yet. I'll get there, people. Don't you worry, I'll get there. And here we are. Load getting up. We're going to be going for the top ones. So I'll just speed this along. Oh, as some of you might appreciate, that's fairly high. Hopefully, there's not a pothole to my left hand side. Oh, we might need some building work doing. Fingers crossed, eh? So when I'm fetching these out, I like to back away until I can see probably the last third of the bale still touching the one below. Oh, Jesus. And then I will tilt back and pull down. This one is getting close that five degrees and that is not good like yeah I'm at a point of not really being happy with how this is coming off so I think I'm gonna restack it to the right and have another go okay back at about four and a half and yet yeah, it feels pretty sketchy but she is coming down long we stay still and we haven't fallen over yet good chance that we're still gonna be all right Keep it close to them bales so that if anything goes wrong, I can just dump it onto them, take all the weight off the machine, and get it back down to the bottom and then just relax. Yeah. Whew, I like relaxing. Go to a few cows on his way back. Hey guys, you alright? I think they're happy. Driving it like this to anybody uh, who's new to driving, you should turn it round and reverse all the way, but um, I know this yard pretty well. I'm going pretty steady, so I'm just lifting it up so I can see what's happening. But yeah, this is not the way to do it. Close as I can get to him, mates, at a minute. All right, I'm in my isolation pod. <laughs> if you look around the cab, it's not very big. There ain't much space in there. But it's fairly comfortable. 
very mucky. This one changes your steering. So you've got your all wheel steering, real tight corners, what we're on now. Two wheel steering, just the front wheels turn. And then we've got the crab steer, where both wheels steer in the same direction, like get you off a wall or something. It's never really used crab steer, can't remember it. Maybe I can count on one hand how many times I've had to use it. We've got the pedal declutch, so when that's engaged and you press on the brake, it takes it out of gear. But I don't really use that one. This one is for the smooth ride, so the boom along the side here has a sort of suspension where it takes out some of the lumps and bumps of the road. I always have that on. We've got automatic, which changes the gears automatically for you. And then this information one is to do with the computer screen there. Don't know if you heard Ash, he's just had a shot. I guess he will have missed because he always does. Um, then we've got windscreen wiper, windscreen wiper, uh, four wheel drive or two wheel drive. This one here changes the auxiliary. So what we usually use for the grab on the front or the locking pins, it changes it to the rear of the machine where it's this pickup hitch. This bit, putting it down so you can pick trailers up. Cam bit on the end, it um, this one that is for reversing the cooling fan in the engine bay. So that if you see there's loads of straw on top of there now, well, periodically it will blow that off. And um, if you want to do it manually, you can press that button and it will do it whenever you want it to. Little bit low down, we have got the air conditioning, so you've got aircon. These two white things, uh, it doesn't normally look like that, but I've had to do a bit of soldering to fix that because this board here was about 170 quid, I think it was. So a little bit of soldering with some 10 pen switches and I fixed it. So much better than spending 110 pound, I think. Yeah, just hot and cold, pretty simple. Hanging out, that cigarette lighter should be inside, but I think when I was fixing it, I knackered that bit up, but hey ho. Joystick, pretty simple. Gears on the top, up and down. Um, we've got auxiliary. We've got pushing the boom in and out. On the rear of the joystick, we've got forwards, backwards, neutral. Really handy because one hand can be on the steering wheel, one on the joystick, and you don't have to use this forward and backwards thing, um, taking your hand off the steering wheel. Great addition that when they uh, implemented that. It's been on it for quite a few years now with JCB, but. Before it was um, not as easy. Here, this lock locks the tilt of the crowd ram. So if you've got something that you want to be as specific, um, say you want to keep something level like a man cage, you would use this button and that would stop the crowd from tilting forward or backwards. Tipping whoever you've got in the man cage out, which would not be fun, would not be good, health and safety all over you, not nice. This one locks the joystick off if you're going down the road, and if the dog accidentally does it and you think, and you go and press the joystick, you think, bloody hell, it's all knackered, and, and you have to start remembering that there is actually a button to knock it off. Um, this one releases the pressure on the auxiliary, or any um, circuit really, as long as you hold that down and then work the part on the joystick that you want it will release the pressure on it this one here motor round so you put it into that one for like um, a brush so it continue working in the middle <coughs> uh, it shakes your bucket and at the front I think it must change your auxiliary I don't really ever use it apart from in the middle so when on this one when you press that button down pull it to the side it will shake the tilt, um, shaking the bucket, as that's what it's trying to show you in that little symbol there. Um, on the newer ones, you don't have to do that, you can just shake it like that. But on this one, because of the way the hydraulics are, it doesn't like moving um, the crowd from one position to another very quickly. Um, hard to explain really without showing you, maybe I'll show you that in another video, because um, yeah, I think I've explained that about as clear as um, a muddy puddle. What we've got is that. That is just um, a locking mechanism. When you lift the pickup hitch at the back up, then you can lift that up and lower your pickup hitch. Um, then when you pick it back up, it locks it in. So there's a physical mechanism on there. I'll show you. It's this cable here, which 
pulls this locking mechanism here so that it's physically locked even if there was an oil leak or a pressure pressure problem with your uh, hydraulic ram that operates this part uh, it is manually locked in so that trailer is going nowhere when that's locked up there yes yeah, so that's my review of the beast not really review just showing you what it's all about really great job for us in being able to stack those bales higher with a TM I could probably only get about seven bales high with this we can go to nine I could even go to ten but we're starting to get a bit dodgy up that height As I can get more bales in the shed any that I'm stacking outside I'll have la less waste because I'll have less top bales so yeah I reckon Within two to three years, this machine paid for itself just in savings on wasted bales. So, I, this is a machine that I've just got to keep. It pays for itself. Having the Matbro headstock, the same as the TM, if for any reason the TM goes down and it needs some warranty work, usually JCB will send us another machine. But you know if it goes down for a couple of hours we're in trouble so having this machine there on standby just being able to use it whenever we need it just really does come in handy get rid of two tractors before I got rid of one of the telehandlers because they are the, just the mainstay of our job um, on a cattle farm so yeah what do people think if you like this sort of content I'm gonna try and produce some more so hit the subscribe button and you'll keep updated with what I'm doing. So thanks a lot guys.